The preliminary final of the All Flag State Premier League saw table-topping Bayswater City, who lost to Florida Athena last week, meet Sorrento, who defeated defending champions Perth, the winner to progress to the grand final next week against Florida Athena. Bayswater was soon on the attack. A crossfield ball picked out Patrick Quinn wide on the right. He played a sharp 1-2, ran to the byline and drilled in a low cross that Steve McDonald cleared for Sorrento. Steve Turnbull collected for Bayswater and fed Cisco Jacquera, who played the ball to the feet of Damian Catalano. But his pass was blocked by Johnny Mirko and Sorrento went on the counter-attack. But a strong challenge from Andy Riali on Gavin Knight saw Bayswater win back possession and Catalano played in Jacquera, but he curled his shot wide. In the seventh minute, Jason Mirko looked to have overhit a cross for Sorrento. Johnny Mirko nodded the ball towards Todd Harnwell, who tumbled to the ground in spectacular fashion, and referee Hugh Best pointed to the spot, deeming John Kearney had pushed him. Up stepped Reese Vitiglia, who blasted his effort over the crossbar. Sorrento had squandered a great opportunity to take the lead. Or was this justice for Bayswater? Did Riali push Harnwell, or did he take a dive? The referee was certainly well placed to make the decision. The game was certainly feisty, and when Thomas Gooding received the ball in space, he played a wonderful through ball that left Jacquera with just the keeper to beat. But a poor first touch took him away from goal, and Curtis Afton saved. Minutes later, Paul McCarthy played a clever ball over the top to Catalano. His cross was cut out by McDonald before Riali stole possession and fed Jacquera. He beat McDonald and pulled the ball back to Giron Maralunda, but his effort was blocked, and then Platten blocked Riali's effort before Aspden gathered. Soon after, a mix-up between McDonald and Platten left Giron Maralunda on the deck. Catalano seized on the loose ball, burst into the box, and forced a sharp save from Curtis Aspden. Another chance came his way after the half-hour mark. Patrick Quinn went on an outstanding run down the right, leaving three Sorrento players in his wake before setting up Catalano. But he pushed his header the wrong side of the post. Then, against the run of play, a long ball forward by Platten was brought down well by Knight, who set up Todd Harnwell. But Papalia saved and Bayswater cleared the danger. In the first minute of injury time, Bayswater worked the ball well in tight space down the right. McDonald let it run and also allowed Jacquera to get to it. He crossed and Thomas Gooding powered his header into the back of the net to give Bayswater a well-deserved lead. McDonald was right to let the ball run but fails to get his body between Jacquera and the ball to shepherd it out. Jacquera whips in across and Gooding powers his header into the back of the net. 1-0 to Bayswater. Yet within a minute, Bayswater conceded a needless free kick. Gavin Knight whipped the ball into the box. Harnwell looked to play it with his arm and Brody Martin ghosted him behind to nod Sorrento level. There is no doubt that Harnwell's raised arm distracts the defence, but Pavelier comes off his line and fails to beat Martin to the ball. So at half-time, it was still honours even. Sorrento came out more determined in the second half and a long ball from Aspden was flicked on by Knight and Bayswater were only saved embarrassment when Mirko was penalised for a push on the defender, although his efforts sailed wide. Johnny Mirko returned the favour to Knight five minutes later, picking out his strike partner at the back post, but his header was directed the wrong side of the post. One thing that Sorrento did well in the second half was close down the threat of Giron Maralunda, and when the ball found him at the edge of the box, Platten quickly cut out his short pass. Bayswater won back possession, but the shot from long range sailed high and wide. Giron Maralunda was forced wide, and in the final minutes received the ball on the right. He cut inside, ran across the penalty area before shooting, but McDonald blocked, and Aspden claimed. And the final whistle sounded for the end of full time. We were headed for extra time. In the 97th minute, Vitilia switched play to substitute Danny Kane, who delivered a pinpoint cross to Knight, who nodded down to Johnny Mirko. Papalier failed to come off his line, and Mirko made him pay, finding the back of the net and giving Sorrento the lead.
A superb ball by Danny Kane and a great header by Knight. Mirko has drifted in behind Riali and Quinn, so when the ball comes to him, the keeper must close him down. Yet Mirko takes a touch and then prods the ball home. Poor defending by the league premiers. Bayswater kept attacking, and a crossfield ball saw Luka Njegic in behind the Sorrento defence, but a poor first touch allowed Aspden to come off his line and save bravely at his feet. Brody Martin, who made a miraculous recovery from an ankle injury, then broke down the right for Sorrento. He found Knight in space, who took the ball around Papalia, but instead of squaring to Montgomery, went for glory and missed. Bayswater continued to play the better football, but heads were starting to drop. Kearney and McCarthy combined before the ball came to Quinn, who drilled a low cross into the six-yard area, only to see it missed by everybody. Sorrento's Knight then beat Riali at the edge of the box. He looked to pick out Michael Aspin at the back post. Negic intercepted, but Aspin did claim possession. His cross came to Nort, and when the ball came back to him, he did well to ride a reckless challenge from Jacera. Played a 1-2 with Pearson, and was only denied by the legs of Luke Sierra. It was Sira who then fed McCarthy at the edge of the Sorrento penalty area. He picked out Giron Maralunda, but as he turned Aspen in shape to shoot, Kane put his body on the line to nick the ball off his boot. Bayswater had a free kick in Giron Maralunda's range. He struck it well, but it dipped too late after it had gone over the crossbar. In the final minute, McCarthy received the ball inside his own half, looked up and played a ball over the top. Platten looked at the linesman as Giron Marilunda broke free and he chased in vain as Giron Marilunda put the ball into the back of the net. But as the Colombians celebrated, attention turned to the referee's assistant, who now had his flag raised for offside. Aspden took the free kick and the final whistle sounded and for the fourth time in four years, the league premiers would not be contesting the grand final. The final score, Bayswater City 1, Sorrento 2. Four well, congratulations in the, in the grand final. Yeah, I mean, the club's delighted. Uh, it's a tough place to come, Bayswater. You know, Maryland is a very good player up front. We knew we needed to uh, do better than we did against him when we came up and drew two here, 2-2 two -two a few weeks ago. And we did, and I think that was the key to us winning the game. Yeah, you know, for, for 25 minutes, I thought they probably dominated a little bit, but... Um, you know, I thought that the, you know once we got the goals and then we, I thought we played well. And we could have actually run out, you know, uh, maybe with more goals, catching them on the break. Kept your shape really well today. And we spoke before about the long ball. That, you know, last time you played them, you played the long ball. This time you played some good football. Look, we haven't played long ball all season, other than the fact that we got to the stage at the end of the season where we'd had a few injuries and suspensions, and uh, we came to Bayswater, which is a quite a small pitch. We were two 0 down. We weren't playing very well, we didn't look like we were going to score, so we were quite brave and went three at the back, and we put Jamie Harmel up front with uh, Steve McDonald, the centre-half, and if you're going to play those two boys up front, there's no point in playing them in the channels for two of them, so, and we got back into it to 2-2, two -two, so, uh, you know, it worked, and then we did the same at, uh, I think it was sort of a bit of a hangover from the cup final, then we got to, ba uh, to Balcatra, and we didn't play very well there, we were 2 nil down, we did the same again, got back to 2 all. Obviously, we didn't know what the results were elsewhere, so we had to keep going for it, and we actually got three at the back. We got caught, and we lost the game 4-3. So that's the only times that we've really gone Route 1 football. So, you know, the other 23 games, you know, we've been playing, I would say we've got more crosses in than anybody this season from wide positions because we've got two very good wide players.